Are you ready to learn a takedown and a defense for one? Stick around. What's going on, YouTube fam? This is Sifu Jimmy Man Freddy here coming at you once again for Street Kung Fu. Today, I've got a special guest coming to you guys from Champions MMA here in Lakeland, Florida, and that's Harley William. He is a coach over there at Champions MMA under Sensei Ross Kellen, a very, very great practitioner of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and his variation as well as American Jiu Jitsu, which is a phenomenal uh, combination of you know, different combat arts from even his Swai Zhao Kung Fu and boxing and a few other things, okay? So it's very, very great over there. If you guys want to learn MMA and you're in the area, that's the best place to go. All right, so Harley, we're going to be working on some takedowns here today and some takedown defenses. So what is your first take? Thank you very much, Sifu. Um, so the first take I have in this situation in a street Kung Fu context is I want to take you to the ground, but I don't want to be in a position where I'm stuck on the ground. Yeah. Um, I want to be able to either continue my attack or be able to evacuate the situation. Um, so that being said, um, the takedown that I would choose is the hip toss. Okay. Really basic takedown that uh, doesn't require a huge amount of technical ability. So in our street situation, we didn't, we didn't square up to box. You know, we, we, went, we any, went straight into anything, a tussle. Anything could yeah. be happening. We're tussling, we're wrestling. Now at this point, what I want to do is close the distance between our hips and get off of his center line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to step to the side behind his leg and bring him over my hip. Now in this position, I didn't come down like this. I stayed on my knee because again, I want to be able to evacuate if needed. Or I can attack, I can bring down my weight with this elbow, or I could even go out to the arm bar for traditional jujitsu ending. But that being said, this is a street context. Mm -hmm. So he may have a friend over there that stopped to talk to a girl, dr grab a drink or something. You never know. So you got to keep aware. Awareness is the most important part of self-defense. That being said, I like this takedown because you can easily evacuate the situation. Yeah. And for those of you who don't know and are complete novices to martial arts, most martial arts has a variation of a hip toss technique. Okay. They all have different ways in it, different concepts behind it, different theories, different uh, ways of thought. But at the end, what we're trying to get down to here is the bare bones of it, which is what it's going to do. And at the end of the day, regardless of where you learned your hip toss, the goal is to get them to the ground, do whatever you're going to do to them. Whether it's in a combat sports scenario where you're going to get them to the ground and like Harley said, put them in an arm bar and something like that and win the match or if it's a street fight, which is what we're fo focused on right here, where you want to slam them on that concrete and then get out of there, all right? So with that said, you know, that's the takedown. So what's the defense to that? Okay, so the defense against this takedown is really rather simple. Um, it is the opposite of doing the takedown. Um, the direction I gave was to bring our hips together and get off the center line. The opposite is true for the defense. Okay. So if he was doing the takedown, he has brought his hips closer to mine, and he's also off of my center line. In this situation, I just want to reverse that. I'm going to step back and bring my hips out. I want to get low. I want to be strong and have a good base. I'm not standing like this where he can you know, suplex me or throw me or anything he wants to do. I'm getting low and getting on his center line. I don't want to be over here, over here. I want to be where we're even. Okay, so that would be the primary defense to the takedown, but that might not always work. You know, somebody might be technically better than you. They might be really strong. They might be fast. Um, so he gets the takedown. We're going to go to that route. He, he landed his takedown. I messed up. I'm in a bad spot. The, the truth is I'm probably going to take a few blows here, but my goal is survival, right? You know, this is a fight. There's no, there's no getting out unscathed. So I'm going to try and make distance, control limbs, do whatever I got to do to get up. Okay, this is a fight. It's going to be a scramble. A lot of different things could happen. It's not always going to look like that. Yeah. But the goal is the same. Get up. Yeah. Because as much as I love uh, traditional Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, um, you know, you can't always stay on the ground in a street scenario. Yeah, I, I, in my opinion, and, and I'm by no means uh, a master Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu practitioner, that's why I've got guys like Harley and 
his, his instructor and other instructors who practice it, who I always like to play around with and pressure test stuff. My stuff, their stuff, so on and so forth. All right, so whoa. <clears throat> with that said, you can see I'm a little out of breath because as he was trying to get away, I was trying to keep him, okay? So that's the only way to truly pressure test it. All right, if he couldn't get away, then what he would have just said would have been total crap. All right, so keep that in mind. So he got away and I don't know if you can see that, trying to hold on to him, I bloodied up my finger, all right? So I was really trying to hold on to him. So what he's saying is true, it works, okay? So with that said, two simple things right there. The takedown itself, how to stop the takedown before you get to the ground, or should I say three things, and how to get away from it once you're taken down by it, okay? In that jujitsu mindset, all right? So now we're gonna jump to my side of things. We're gonna do a takedown, and uh, I'm also gonna use Harley's jujitsu mentality. I, I wanna use it against a person who their primary focus is grappling. Once they get a hold of you, a grappler, a trained grappler, that's their world. You know, they're comfortable there. They're comfortable doing anything that has to do with grappling, whether it's on their feet or on the ground. All right, so you have to understand that. Trained grapplers, you're in their world, all right? So in order to survive in their world, you gotta be able to do something and understand what they're doing in order to break away from it, all right? Now, most martial arts systems, it doesn't matter where they come from, Japan, Korea, Philippines, India, I mean, pick your pick, China especially, you know, in my case, most Mayan martial arts are Chinese, okay? Um, there's variations to everything in order to get away from different scenarios. There is no perfect system. If somebody's selling you that, let me know the way to say it, that bullshit, okay? Uh, they're snake oil salesmen. Get the hell out of there, all right? They're just selling you stuff so they can look like a god in front of you. There's no such thing, all right? You're not Goku. This isn't an anime. You're not going to power up to Super Saiyan 20 all right, and beat everybody in front of you, okay? Now, with that said, we're going to use uh, two of the most famous takedown attempts for wrestling, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and so on and so forth, a single leg and a double, all right, for my particular defense. All right, so the first one we're going to do is a single leg. Now, first we're going to show you a single leg slowly, and then we're going to have them do it a little quicker and actually succeed, okay? So first and foremost, go ahead. Here's a single. As you notice, when he goes in, he goes in and he gets in super close. So go step by step for me. One, his head's right into my hip and thigh, and he lifts the leg. And then he pushes it downward while he yanks, and he yanks me down, all right? All right, and if you do it quickly enough, properly, the technique is sound. You're, the person's going down, all right? Unless they have a combat IQ. A combat IQ, uh, you know, a lot of people have called it fight IQ, so on and so forth. It's being comfortable in there, being comfortable getting hit, being comfortable taken down. These are mostly associated with combat sports veterans, okay? MMA fighters, kickboxers, boxers, so on and so forth. But martial artists who utilize it for combat, and when I say martial artists who utilize it for combat, I don't mean your everyday rinky-dink, you know, martial arts school that's teaching you how to kick and punch with a bunch of hayas and kiyas and all that stuff. Anybody can practice forms. But practicing the application and pressure testing it is key. Practice every form you can. That's the art part of it. That's the beauty. Okay? Martial arts translated as, you know, warlike study and creation of beautiful things. Study it all. Take it all in. But when you train for combat, make sure it's a combat method, not a training method. Okay? Training method is kind of like a speed bag. You know, you're not going to punch somebody like you punch a speed bag. You're not going to jump rope to beat somebody. You're not going to run five miles to beat somebody. You're going to run five miles to get away from them. All right, so keep that in mind. Combat method is, you know, if I'm gonna hit you, I'm gonna hit you in a certain area and completely stop you from moving, breathing, so on and so forth. Same with jujitsu. They have sport jujitsu, then they have combat jujitsu. There's a big difference. Combat jujitsu, they're not doing all the tussling and struggling. They're getting to where they need to be and they're ending it, okay? Keep that in mind. So with that said, the single leg, I'm gonna use a technique that we use in, in Wing Chun uh, called Gum Sao, 
which translates to pinning hand. All right? In our uh, second form called chong kyu, at right at the end, we do a shifting variation where our hands go down, down, down. Okay? So in this case, when he goes for that single, I push down on his head. All right? Now you notice I also step back. All right? Now he still has the leg, and he can pull on it, but he doesn't have the same leverage because I'm pushing down on his head. He still needs to be able to lift his upper body in order to make that work. All right, so if I'm pushing down on his head and I'm lowering my center of gravity, it's increasingly hard, if not impossible, for him to lift. All right, while that's happening, the full technique, I'm pushing down and then away. As I push with my back leg, like I'm lunging forward, almost like a fencing lunge. Okay, so as I do this, I push, all right? So when he comes, go ahead, all right? I'm keeping him away. It has resemblance to almost like a sprawl a little bit without the full sprawl out, okay? You're just going back, okay? Even like this, if you notice, watch, try to lift. It's difficult for him, all right? So, when he does that and I'm pushing on his head, it's not going anywhere, all right? So now I just push with this and this on his head as I lower my center of gravity still, okay? Now my body's on him, my hands are on his head, He's no, there's no way he can lift as I push him off in a way. Always getting his head to continuously go in this direction, all right? So that's one good simple one, all right? The next one is going to be the simplest of them all, in my opinion, and the most dangerous, so please do it slowly when you're practicing, all right? And then after a while, get somebody to put a helmet on or something, all right? So as he's coming in, he grabs, he's lifting the leg, right? You have to do this before he cinches it in. Go. Right when he cinches it in, if you notice, If you notice real quick, go nice and slow. I'm lifting up, making him believe he's got it, and as I'm slamming that foot down, I'm lifting me up my other knee and kneeing him right in the face. All right, so it looks a little wonky when you're doing it like step by step like that. All right, so we'll do it again. Boom. See what I mean? I don't want to lift my leg because I really don't want to catch him in the nose. Thank All right. You. <laughs> All right, so it's a straight knee to the face, but you got to be quick, your reaction time has to be really quick on that one, okay? The other one, you can kind of slow it down and just kind of use leverage for it. This one is a strike, it's gotta be fast, all right? Now, the next famous takedown for wrestlers and any grappler is the double leg, all right? So, go for a double leg. All right, so nice and slow. Drops down, comes up, dumps over, okay? Grabs both legs, got his shoulder and head in the hip, and he's lifting up and then dropping, all right? Potato sacking him over, all right? So in this case, I want to do a technique that is highly criticized, highly laughed at in a, in a lot of circles uh, in the Wing Chun system. At the end of our third form, which is the BG form, it's a technique where we go down like this, and then we come up and push out, all right? And then we do it again, all right? Now, even I criticized this when I first learned it until guys like Ip Chun and Ip Ching, the sons of Ip Man, the famous Ip Man, and Mai Sifu, Samuel Kwok, explained it thoroughly and were like, it has many different applications and ideologies. You gotta think outside the box while using it. So in this case, I'm gonna use it when he's coming in, right? One, and as, as I lift, I can control where he's going. So if I lift, notice he still has his hand behind my leg here, but my hand is right here. And I'm already tilting him this way, okay? And I've got control of here. My arm is right in front of his throat on this side and hitting this arm. So as I step back with that same leg, this is what's gonna happen. Okay, and it's literally, as he's coming in, 
I go down. Okay, with that same mindset from what I just showed you earlier. Once I'm here, he is stable here. Keep this in mind. If you miss, and if you're not confident in what you're doing, and in the intent, he will succeed. There's no ifs, ands, or buts, okay? Notice, I came down, I dropped my chest on top of his shoulder, going down, got behind, or should I say in the middle of this arm, in the middle of this arm, if you come around here, you're gonna see where my other arm is, and I'm actually right here on his thigh, and I'm in the center you know, of his head, his arm, everything. I'm not letting him lock it into place, even though he does have his hand behind my knee. But I don't have him let it, or I'm not letting him cinch it all in, okay? So when I step back, see what I mean? I can stay right here and draw him forward when I need to, all right? Now that's a very simple one. Gives you kind of a sprawl mentality. Um, and I can make it as fancy as I want or as gruesome as I want. For instance, he goes in. Fancy little throw. Just get him off me. What are you doing? Don't touch me. Okay? Or, do it again. Come in. Right here. As you can see, brought him right down. Now he's in a really bad position. Yep. All right? I'm going to put a little torque on it, tap when it feels. All right. See? It doesn't take much. Okay? So, very, very simple. Okay? And by looking at it, it may look complex, and some people will say, well, man, that's not Wing Chun. Stop being a purist. Stop reading too many books and assuming that you can control every outcome because of a picture you saw, okay, or a movie you watched. Wing Chun is a combat system. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is a combat system. Just because we use it in sports and stuff like that does not make it any less lethal, okay? I am not going to sit there and go chain punching like Donnie Yen and It Man, which was a fun, are phenomenal movies, okay? But they still, they're movies. They're entertainment. Those are choreographed movements, okay? We're not choreographing anything here. We're trying to pressure test it against real technique, real people, real pressure, okay? So when this happens, as you can see, I'm breathing heavy. So is Harley. You know, we got, we got a little huff and puff in our voice, okay? Because we're pressure testing it, okay? You don't pressure test it, it's never gonna work. Keep that in mind. We're martial artists, martial, warlike study. The creation of beautiful things comes during, before, during, and after, but it's still a warlike study, all right? So keep that in mind, all right? We are thanking Harley for coming in and helping. We're gonna see him more on Street Kung Fu helping out, him and a bunch of his other uh, classmates over there, you know, Jose maybe next time will come in too as, as well. We're going to go over there as well and visit with Sensei Ross and have him teach a lesson one day. All right, so keep an eye out for that and let's keep it going. Keep training. Remember, do it a thousand times for one time right. The harder you train, the shorter the fight. All right, thanks Harley for coming out. Thank you, Sifu. Thanks for watching. Remember, click like, subscribe. Ring that bell so you can get notified next time. And above all, comment below. Open the dialogue. Let's talk. What you liked about it, what you didn't like about it. All right? Either way, we're going to talk about it. Have fun. See you next time. Train hard. You got more techniques just like this one to come here on Street Kung Fu. Hit that subscribe button.